Hi guys, welcome to Pop Dust. I, I'm Annie Delgado and I'm here with East of Eli. Welcome guys. Remember the first time? Oh, the first time we met. Time stood still. How could I forget? Wouldn't be the last time I'd see you smile. That's when we fell in love Our hearts opened up Just now That's when we rose above The dark And love lit the sky Love lit the sky Eastofeli.com, East of Eli on Instagram and Twitter and the rest of the universe. So. And you're all yes. tagged there. So you're all yeah, it's fantastic. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much. You this has been yeah, amazing. Thank, Thank you for us. watching. Did you get to do any fun touristy things yet, or is it all just kind of business? No, business? I mean, we. we uh, yeah, we did. We've last done. night. Oh yes. Marlon Wayne. <laughs> yes, we did. We got to go see Marlon Wayne's who's uh, at, at performing the at Caroline. Caroline's. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very Marlon's cool. Thought. That yeah. was really fun. Yeah. Which isn't really touristy, but it was, but it's still no, it was, like no, nice to get out. Went to Central New York, same. The adults in New York. Yeah. It was really nice. Yeah. 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 No, it was awesome. It's actually her first comedy show. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's so a cool. Good really one funny. to go to. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's great. awesome. Nice. There are tons of. I walked. I was in the 
East Village the other day, and I just stumbled upon one. You can just walk around here and yeah. walk into comedy. Yeah. Probably just stand outside. There's a lot of funny folks outside on the street. Seriously, so just, that's where the real comedy is. Just watch people in, right? <laughs> So you guys are from Vancouver at the moment, but from all yeah. over the place. How did you guys start creating music together? This is great. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, music has been, always been my passion. Um, you know, I was acting for a long time and everything. That's how we met. And then um, she kept pushing me to do the music, and, you know, I kind of always had something else I was doing. Um, but it was something I've always been passionate about, and all the characters that I've ever played, um, like, like for Bring It On even, I played Jan Jan and Chili Man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can write a song for him. So I write songs for every one of my characters. And so um, finally, I was like, you know what? I must have gone and do this. And, and uh, yeah, so back to the little Your random. own character. Be yeah, you. be me. Be you. So yeah, it was, it was cool. So we just um, you know started developing the sound and stuff. And I'm kind of rooted in uh, folk, you know. Um, but uh, uh, recently, we got an album that's coming out in February called Last, Lost Transmission. And that one, we went with uh, more of that modern sound. And, right, right. but kept the folk in it so that everything used to back down just to the guitar. And so what's crazy about it is, I think the American songwriter that said we were, they tried to coin us as, Ameri uh, they said a, a cinematic folk pop with a modern electronic sound. I can agree with that. Yeah, it's so. very, very cinematic. You kind of picture like watching a movie with like stunning visuals while like, you know, listening to that. I appreciate that. Yeah, of course. That's, that's awesome. They're all yeah. placement songs, so anybody can put them in their show right. or movie. Like <laughs> <a> Supergirl? <laughs> like what? Uh -huh. Right, so uh, Tyler, you're on Supergirl. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to talk about something I love asking the people who both do acting and music? How is that different for you? We talked about you stepping out of your roles. Um, how is it a different kind of outlet for you? Well, you know, I've been acting forever. You know, I started kind of modeling and doing commercials and stuff when I was 13, and so it's kind of like all I've ever known. Right. But so my whole life I grew up being somebody else. And so, like, this was really, this is the first opportunity for me to do something that's just being me. Like, I get up on stage and it's not like I'm performing as somebody else or a character or whatever it is. It's like I get to just be me. Right. And have fun, and people just get to realize how crazy I am. It's yeah, great. Yeah, you get to but wear what you want to wear. But just, yeah, you know, but that was also a big challenge for me, too, because I'm so used to speaking other people's words. It's like, okay, when it comes down to mine, and I'm singing my voice, and it's me, it's much more vulnerable for me than even just like having a scene where I'm bawling my eyes out or screaming or like losing it or whatever. Right. It's like, it was much more challenging for me to do that. Um, my heart just started pounding, and like I choked up, and like it was just, and he's always like, what? I'm not like, you're okay, you're good, you got it. And he's always been so encouraging for me, so it was really just a, it's been a great opportunity for that, personally. But then to be able to step out and, and work with Nathan and just have fun writing music and getting up on stage and jumping around, and he's incredible, so he just inspires me tremendously, especially when he's on stage. It's just like, all of a sudden, he's, I mean, he's always sexy, he's like a sexy <laughs> man. And I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> it's a different kind of energy, right? It's yeah. Totally. And I love it. I was really scared the first time, you know, beforehand. But then you get on stage, you're like, oh, I, I think I well, can yeah, get and, used to this. And there's a whole side to it. I was, I was explaining to her that, like, as a musician, you know, um, a lot of musicians, I mean, famous musicians get, you know, they vomit before a show or something. I mean, that happens <laughs> to a lot of people. And, you know, that nerves, like, those, it builds up. But for me, I don't get nervous at all because at some point I realize that the music, it speaks. And it's like... People, it's not about me, right? right? It's not about her, it's not about us, it's about them. They're there to have an experience and we need to deliver that experience. So once I realized like it wasn't about me, all of a sudden it was like, I, I mean, if I mess up and I do, my fans know, I do. <laughs> and they love it, they laugh and we have a great time, we start a song over it. It's, it's like, I'm like, no, hold up, hold up, you pay more than that, you need to do a better <laughs> job. So, you know, but it's cool because it, it's just really freeing, you know, and it's, yeah. it feels so good to be yourself. You know, and then encourage others to do the same. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, where do you guys have any interesting pre-show rituals? You're talking about like rock stars, oh. but like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's. I think cool. ours are a little bit more non-traditional. Yeah, I mean, we have one little thing we do, which um, Kyle and I, since we've known each other, and we've been married over 15 years now, so which is a big that's deal amazing. in the inter entertainment yeah. business. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I pulled that off, but um, mm -hmm. I do call her Gracie. <laughs> she is grace, like she emanates that. But um, you know, for for us, um, we had this little saying we would do before auditions, which was just fun, fun, fun. It's just, just like just this, to remember, it's like, like 
have fun. Fine. Life's you know? too short. Just go and enjoy what you're doing, and and if you can even make fun of it, you know, a lot of times it just strips away the nerves. It strips away the like. You get out. You get out of yourself. Like get yeah. out of the way. You have to. When you're as an artist, you always have to get out of the way of the art. You know. Right, right. Don't try to control it. And mm -hmm. so. So it's a great reminder. Yeah. So it's silly. So we all do our hands in mm -hmm. and do fun, fun, fun before we go. That's so amazing. it's cheesy, I feel like but. People should do that before work. Right. Yeah, we're like eight-year-olds. Or driving in New York City. Fun, yeah. fun, fun. Yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So collaborating is something that you mentioned is really fun for you. Um, and songwriting, you know, because it's so different than collaborating as actors in a scene. How do you guys come up with ideas? You know, what's your collaboration process like? You want to take a stab at that one? <laughs> well, you know, Nathan is an amazing songwriter. And he, um, I, he can just pull out the most amazing stuff and so he usually starts writing the music and then it's almost like kind of scatting to the music sort of just throwing out you know the melody and whatnot sure. and then you know because I pop in on some of the songs not all the songs and so but we'll just sit and be able to write together and kind of throw out ideas and we write very differently so like our writing style is different um, but it's great because then you can kind of fuse the two mm -hmm. together and it's like He's teaching me a better way to write, and I'm teaching him a better way to write. It's just kind of cool. That She's the real writer when it comes to writing. That's not true. No, no, like no. I mean, as a songwriter, yeah, but as a writer, like poet, poetry, and like you know, spoken word, and like just in writing. I mean, this girl is like insane. She's like I call her. I call her a mystic hero. She like lives in like La La Land. She's somewhere I else. Do. It's amazing. I like it there. It's great. That's awesome. It's fun, fun, fun. So <laughs> there you go. Do you draw from like? Mystics, like different, like folklore. Are you into that kind of thing, or no? Is that just a? I think it's just kind of like my own little mystical world right, that right. I just live in. And it's just, it's great. Unicorns. Oh, unicorns and rainbows. All sorts of stuff. Gummy bears. Gummy bears for sure. Oh yeah. Arabo, all the yeah. way, all the way. All of the sugar. Yes. Yeah. Um, great. Well, um, with your songwriting, when you're writing songs together, do you have a specific process when you guys record? Um, do you like to lay things down and then come back to it later? Yeah, it's always got the music first, and, and I've been very fortunate to work with some amazing people on this on the latest album. Um, I mean, we both have, but uh, Jordan Wright, he's one of the producers on the album. Um, he's kind of like this unknown, I would say, in a sense, <laughs> uh, treasure chest of just like treasure trove of like amazing lyrics and melody and passion, and he's just so good at what he does. Um, so it's like I finally met my match, and I've learned a lot from him. And he's a hell of a singer. Yeah. Um, and he has a band called City of Sound, and so they're, they're actually with us tonight. yeah, they're playing with us tonight. Like we oh, came nice. really, we came fast cool. friends, and now we're like brothers. And like and he's like he's like my brother. It's like it's it's yeah. pretty cool. We have a great relationship with him. Yeah. He so and so for me, it's like you know, it's always music first. You know, because I I have to have something to kind of work with. Um, he can write like from just he can he gets a melody. You know, chords it on his phone because he'll forget it in like 30 seconds. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's Jordan for you. Um, yeah, but it's like, you know, we'll start with the music usually and, and then start to build out a concept. And usually when I'm listening to music, I start to visualize. I guess that's where the okay, cinematic yeah. thing comes. There I start to visualize like the story. And um, it's a great song that uh, we have called Crazy Beautiful. Um, and uh, that one, as Jordan was on the piano, I just started seeing this like, actually, it was in New York. Started seeing this like kind of uh, apartment building, you know, and these it was at night, and I saw like it was on fire, and inside, um, it's it's dramatic, but it's good, it's good. Um, it's this couple that realizes they can't get out, right? And so instead of like panicking, they sit down and kind of have their last moment together, looking at each other, and the man is professing to, you know, uh, his better half, like. You know how much they they love and how crazy beautiful they are and how amazing it's been. You don't know if they're gonna get out or not. You know, and that's yeah, so. Yeah. yeah, I guess I go kind of deep. I guess you know. It's like you write to the music video. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I see the music. Yeah, I, I do. love that. Yeah, music videos and visuals are so important. Absolutely. So important. Yeah. How does that kind of play into your guys' it's work? Since you both are visual people, being actors, um, you know, how important do you find music videos to your? Oh, it's, it's, it's really important. Um, we're just getting ready to start doing all the concept videos right now. Um, and we've been very kind of like cautious in how we went out and, and we've done that because we want to make sure that the people that we're involved with are visionaries as well. You know, right. that's another thing for, for us is, you know, it, it should be a, a collaborative effort, right? So 
I, I really trust everybody that we bring on board to hey, do your part. They're like, mm -hmm. well, do you want this, that? I'm like, no, you know what? I want you. I want your the very All best the of you. Right. To, you know? If your thing is cinematography, like yeah. you trust your Absolutely. Angles, yeah. So we got a couple of really cool videos that are coming up. They'll be coming out here, I believe, at the beginning of 2018. Very exciting. So yeah. show tonight in New York City. Yes. That in 2018, and then your album in February. Yes. Do you have any other shows coming up soon? No, you know what? It's, it's kind of sad. I had to tell uh, all the fans out there, and I know it's like bums me out too, but it's like, um, this is, you know, talk to my manager. He was like, this should be the last show because we need to prep everything um, to get things out there, you know, for, for the record in, in 2018, I guess, in February. So. Um, and we started working with T-Mobile as well. Oh, cool. T-Mobile, T-Mobile, yeah. Magenta. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys write a song for them? Uh, not yet, but we're going to. Um, yeah, actually, right. um, it's funny enough, but, um, John Ledger, the CEO, um, we got to know him uh, in a roundabout way. It's a long story, so I won't go into that. But he's just, the, he's like the most amazing person. And so, um, actually, when we were playing at the uh, Knitting Factory in Brooklyn, um, he watched on Periscope, a fan was Periscoping. And he, the, the title track, Lost Transmission, he loved that song. So he texts me afterwards and he's like, he's like, I want that song. I love that song. And so, it's and this is kind of ironic. Yeah, yeah, Lost Transmission, don't get lost. <laughs> no, and it's, it's great. And, and so, it, you know, he's just a really compelling and amazing person. And um, while we were there, he knows that we're really big into Flanch P2. And so, here's there's like a down moment and the fan is sitting there goes hey john says from the back and i'm like i thought they're with t-mobile you know and i was yeah, like yeah. wait what and so i start talking conversing with john on stage through social media through periscope and twitter and um and you know he basically says hey i'd like to give five thousand dollars for everybody to have a drink you know of course the crowd goes nuts and I was like, man, I'm going to one-up you one, John. That's amazing. <laughs> Appreciate your generosity. But what if we took that money and instead, everyone, what if we took that and sewed that money into a, a water well in Africa and give people clean water? And everyone went nuts. And John... It was called Thirst Project, so we kind of tied it in for yep, and Yep, and John, like, like, instantaneously was like, done. And so the next morning, I get this text, and he's like, hey, where do I send this money to? How do I get it done? And he did, like... Like this, it was just That's incredible. Amazing. That was so rad. That's yeah. definitely the kind of people you want to work with, yeah. for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 That brings me to two questions: social media and social responsibility. I feel like that's such a thing for you know public figures. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Um, 100%, yeah. How do those things play? And obviously, you said you work with um, what was the name of the organization? The Thirst Project. The Thirst Project. Yeah, and we've been starting to work with um, an organization called To Write Love on Her Arms, and then also the Trevor Project. Yeah, yeah, I'm familiar with both of those. Yeah, they're, they're great amazing, organizations. Amazing, amazing. And so that kind of you know that has led us to really being able to use the platform that we have to positively influence you know uh, the the community a big part of the LGBTQ community actually yeah um, which has been amazing adore. and so that's been a, an amazing outreach for us through Twitter through Instagram I'm not really on Facebook I have just sort of was like that's enough for me just to Instagram <laughs> right I feel like Facebook um, with this generation is phasing out anyways yeah, yeah it, it's yeah. great but I just was like I just you've got two I got three kids I don't have time for all that <laughs> so um, but yeah but then we have crit change. Yeah, and create change. Yeah, which is our organization. Yeah. So, but it's not a charity. It, it's it's more highlighting charities, and the focus is really on. Uh, it's an online community um, that we've sowed our own, you know, blood, sweat, and tears, and finances into just to put together because to get back, um, like you were saying, that power of influence. You know, sure, when you have a platform, even. well, utilize your creativity with purpose, and so create change is all about being a creator for social change, for social good, and doing something that's going to give back, because the, the, the interesting thing is once you do that, you realize, like, your creativity and abounds, like, to a whole other level, because now you have a sense of purpose in what you're doing, right. and, you know, it's something that's going to be dear to your heart, so, like, we have a, a son, our son, um, has, um, he's a... Autistic, right? I mean, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, he's ADHD and he has Asperger's. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, that's close to our heart and something that we, you know, mm -hmm. we're Lovers, involved yeah. in and stuff. So. And daughter, too. Yeah, she's yeah. and then Africa's well. a really big thing for Kyla. She's never been there. She's always wanted to go, and that's how we got involved with Thirst Project, you know. So, with Seth Maxwell and them. So, it's, it's just like finding those things that are naturally, like, you know, you take your natural talents and you take 
that natural like passion, passion. and you put it together. It's so yeah. easy, and you don't have to think about it. You know, you think about charity. We're trying to redefine that idea of being a philanthropist and, and being someone that gets back. Because when you think about it, um, you know, the government they can do what they can, right? right. But they're not going to be able to solve all the world's problems. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. we can, you That's know. Right. And and Bono said this. <laughs> Sorry, I will shut up. I, no, I, I, I talk a lot. I'm I'm talk talking. Talking. No, I talk a lot. <laughs> this poor girl. It's um, good. Yeah. No, but so Bono has a, uh, my favorite quote of all time, um, and I'm a huge Oscar Wilde fan, so that's saying a lot. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, Bono said, "Music can change the world because it can change people," and that's why I do what I do. I don't. I'm not trying to be a rock star. Um, I try to tell my fans that on stage, and I'm like, "You are a rock star." I'm like, "I'm not trying to be. I don't want to be a rock star. I just I want to get out of the way of music, and this is for you. This is your moment. And this music, you know, it's inspiring." At the same time, it's fun, so mm -hmm. you know, and it's really good music, you know, yeah. and it's different. Um, genre, it's not genre specific. I switch over all the time. I've got a new song called Nine to Five that it's definitely more like uh, like a Chance the Rapper kind of style, you nice. know. And well, I love that about where we are in music right now. Too. It doesn't matter, and you can go. Yeah, it's fair. Like Buddy Holly, like, you can like throw in his mm -hmm. influence with a rap song, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We've got awesome. in, that, in that song Nine to Five, we cross. 13 genres, and we were working with this amazing producer named Rocky, uh, four-time Grammy Award winner. Um, we've done now three songs with him uh, for the album, and with 9 to 5, I read these articles on him before I got to meet him, and, you know, he's always talking about taking people outside the box, like, outside their comfort zone, and I said, dude, I met him, and I said, man, I'm so excited to be here. I don't know if you're going to kick me out for saying this, but I said, I think you finally met your match, because... He said, East of Eli does not play in the sandbox. I play outside, but I don't even play in the playground. We have to go, we're going to the woods on this one, man. <laughs> and he's been having so much fun. He's really been blown away. But they, he's like, dude, you like really, he's like, you've got like Southern rock in here. You've got country. You've got gospel. You've got hip hop. You, I mean, we literally, funk, pop. Like, pop. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an alternative. It's all there. It's just like, and it's just so fun. I love what music's at right now. Yeah, well, it's amazing. and what's great about it is that it has such a mass appeal because that just anybody that likes any music out of those genres, like we've found people from all different, you know, sides and walks of life that go like, wow, I really connect with the music. It's not just the music, but it's the message. And that's what, again, kind of brings us back to like the question of being, of using your influence, using that. It's, it kind of just feels like that thing where it's like, if you have, if you're in a position of power, if you will, if you're in a position of influence, it's like, mm -hmm. you just be an asshole not to use it the right way, you know what I mean? Ooh, and I just said it, oh, then, oh, we're like, we're, we're press friendly here. Oh, cool. Okay. Anyway. It's all good. Asshole. Okay. Yeah. Um, there you go. Anyway. Say it one more time. Um, yeah, I think that also, if you are in a position of power, you're encouraging others, you know, yeah. everyday people to use, you know, their own, whatever, whether it be their Twitter page, whether it be, yeah. like, talking to somebody on the train who had a bad day. Exactly. To really I think we don't realize the power that we yield. It doesn't, it doesn't take you being well-known or being, like, in the media or, you know, even, like, on, on any kind of, like, platform. It's like, we all have that ability and that power within the circle that we just navigate in and like the people that we work with people again like you said it's like one thing that we raised our son uh, all of our kids with but you know we always get compliments about our people. son <laughs> because he is just naturally gets up and opens the door for people he naturally says excuse me he stands up and he looks people in the eye and he shakes their hand when he meets them and like that's just it just seems like that's what it should be right but it's, it's kind of going away it is sadly. it's you know it's not commonplace anymore so like we have our kids, they say, you know, nice to meet you, Mr. So-and-so or Miss So-and-so. Please send thank yous when they're yeah. ordering How food old are your like kids? that. Um, our son's going to be 14 next month. Wow. Super yeah. weird. That's yeah. crazy. So we Three inches taller than me. <laughs> just like, she was 16 when we met. I was 45. <laughs> you looked good, yeah. so. No, no. I, I, was, I, was, I was 19 turning 20, so. I was 16 turning 17, so it's cool. But yeah, so our son is going to be, uh, oh my god, I almost said 17. I'm like, no, <laughs> 14. 14 next month, and then we have two girls that are 11 and 8. Yes. Awesome. And so, and they are the biggest East of Eli fans. Oh, amazing. Like, I was going to ask, do you have a lot of music in your household? Oh all my time. gosh, everyone's saying And our son stuff. is like, he gets on GarageBand, and <laughs> just, I mean, it's insane. He wants to be a does. DJ, so I'm going to take him on tour in June. We'll go to Europe. And let him open up the shows because nice. he's really That's good. Like as a father, I'm so proud of the work he does. It's like 
He's he literally like, played me something. Say that. We're like, no, 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 no. You're no, he like played something. I literally just got choked up. I was just so overwhelmed, like by how good it was. And it's like, like EDM music, and you're just sitting there, but it's moving <laughs> because our son made that. And yeah. Right, right. And I'm like, did you steal this? And he's like, and then show me all these. He's like, you know, like 30, 40 tracks, and he's getting in these downloads, the and I'm like, yeah, and I don't, think, I don't know where he got it. I mean, I'm, well, I know he got it, but I don't know like <laughs> when he took the time to figure that out because he's not the kind of person that wants to learn how you know, to do something. He doesn't yeah. want to be told. Kids so, listen though, like, yeah. he just starts like, to do it, how you know? Yeah. Until they, like, yeah. surprise you. Like yeah. That. Yeah. yeah. Our 11 year old has such a beautiful voice. Like, she sings like an angel. And so, Aww. we're always singing in the like house, you. all the time. And then our youngest, she has a guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, she has the cutest voice in the world. Yeah, and she sounds uh, like a chipmunk. She sounds, yeah, so it's like, like seriously, she could be on with Alvin and chipmunks. <laughs> and chipettes. Sure. Chipettes, yeah. So maybe like a partridge family right there? We could. In the near future? <laughs> We'd be like, I don't even know what you would but call But like us. genre blend it, you know? Totally. Yeah. I mean, the kids okay. do want to buy a school bus, so that, that could <laughs> work out. We're not even going to go with Joe's house. <laughs> we can get into a whole thing there. What are you guys going to play today? You know what? Well, so we were going to play, I had gone on Periscope earlier, we were going to play, uh, uh, nowhere and uh, the silent kind, but they're not silent enough. Um, <laughs> so, because there are people working around here. Um, so, for us, we thought we'd play "Love Let the Sky," which is a song that we wrote. Um, kind of, it's a, it's kind of got a folk thing to it, but it's about, um, it's about kind of our journey and yeah. just kind of some truth and what we've learned along the way. So, having yeah. been together so long and grown up together, we've really we've grown up together I and think having that's... kids like. Incredible that you guys have such a great family unit. Yeah, and it's just a non-traditional, you know. Like yeah, family totally. first. And it's you hard. know, we've, we've, and even.